great pleasure to hand over to Mark. Just give you a little bit of a background on him as you stand out there. Come on, Mark. Mark 28 years in the business, uh, a fantastic supporter of New Zealand venison and growing that in the, in the USA, major importer and distributor of Savina venison. Um, and it's a pleasure to have him and, uh, and Annie out to their very first Dairy Industry Conference after 28 years supporting this industry. Mark. Well, it's a real honour to be here today, and uh, after 28 years in the US market and quite a few years uh, as a, a late teenager and, and the early, uh, early years of the deer industry, it's, uh, it's great to see where it's all gone, and uh, it's great to be a small part of where it's all going, and I think uh, just st st before I start, I say the future's been bright, and uh, I think we've got a long future ahead of us, so without further ado, we'll, we'll just uh, go over some of the things that we do uh, in our operation in, uh, in Los Angeles. Okay, so um, this is our facility. Uh, it was purpose-built back in 2001. Um, we're, we're, we're based in uh, the city of Vernon. Vernon is, uh, is right next to the downtown Los Angeles commercial area, and Vernon is an industrial city, so where you find all your distribution, distribution of, of a lot of proteins. They're still killing uh, hogs in, in Vernon, and um, just recently they were still slaughtering beef in Vernon. And uh, so, yeah, so really a main hub for distribution outs. We're inbound from the Pacific and just dis distributing all over the US. So a um, little snapshot of our cool store. Um, some of the trucks for the Savannah branded. So we've been a part of Savannah since the first day Savannah got started. It's been, it's been a great brand, uh, a great uh, standards. Uh, a little snapshot down the warehouse, a quiet day. So we're, we're, we're integrated. What, is, what does that really mean? Well, we take control of the product from the, from the time it gets packed and either ships out of uh, Tauranga or Port Chalmers. Uh, we're in con control of the containers. The containers come into our facility. Um, we're positioned um, 19 miles from the port of Los Angeles, uh, Long Beach, and we're 15 miles from Los Angeles LAX uh, for, for when we do do air freights, which is very seldom, and for our daily distribution. Facility is 56,000 square feet, and uh, I, know, I know we're a wee bit behind the times. That's 17,500 metric square feet, square metres. Um, it's fully refrigerated uh, from top to bottom, and it's uh, 43 high, so we, we stack everything five high. 5,000 pallet positions, um, and we pick up another thousand under the blowers. Um, being half Scottish and, and raised in the central Otago, we, we, we fill every spot we can. Okay, a little bit about what we do. So our premise, we're a USDA inspection house, we're an eye house. So what does that mean? We can bring product from anywhere in the world, it gets inspected, checked for food safety, and then once it's stamped off, it can go to commerce. It's, it's not so relevant for venison because it falls under fish and wildlife, but a lot of our other products. On a daily basis, we have the USDA in our facility, we're a processing facility. We, we, we do grinding or mincing, we, we're cutting steaks, we're doing portion control, we're adding, adding value to a lot, of, a lot of products, basically cutting it to order to what the customer requires. We're a logistics centre, we have our own logistics department. We're shipping across country and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about our great partner we have in Dot Foods. We've been there since 1988. We ship six days a week. So we, we're shipping all over the country. We have contracts with all the major airlines. Uh, we have contracts with, with, with several of the trucking companies. And we, um, so, so we, and we have an in-house FedEx department, which basically means we can drop ship to restaurants, hotels, anywhere in the country, wherever the customer may need it. Because guess what happens? The chef forgets to order, the party gets bigger, um, there's a slight menu change, and we're there to help them all out. That's part of our role. Distribution is across 48 contiguous states, Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. And I think, to a lot of us, we've really got to understand distribution. And again, um, uh, Rod's going to cover a lot of that, but we're dealing with a really big country. 
with really big populations spread out all over, opportunities all over the country. But our real opportunity is how do we get the product to the customer? You know, we, we've, we all know we've got the best product in the world, but if we can't get it to the customer, then what good are we? So that, that's, our, that's part of our challenge. Our big, there's one of, our, one of our partner trucks, Dot Foods. So we, we, sell, we sell direct to approximately 300 plus wholesalers. Um, premium business channels, food service, followed by retail and e-commerce. Okay, here's a snapshot. Um, In-house, we have a, I mentioned we have a grinding operation. So this is, a, this is coming out of the, uh, the grinding machine. Everything's automated, there's no lifting. Um, we have a, a full-on butchering cut shop. Um, we're cutting steaks and, and chops to order to, to quite a few major steakhouse chains and independents on a daily basis and shipping out every day. And um, this is, a, this is a, the bottom one's a bit of a snapshot. We actually, on a side issue, we also own and operate a USDA EU wild boar facility in Texas. That's a quick snapshot of the, of the boning room. The role of an importer. Our role is to partner with suppliers that have continuous supply and sustainability. And this year we know it's going to be a challenge, but we're up for it. Develop markets and demand. Product ambassadors. Everyone in our facility, all our salespeople, everyone right down from the receptionist is in a product ambassador. Everyone has a very strong understanding of all the products, what they do for you and what we can do for the customer. The sales office, we have, we have sales people on the East Coast, Chicago for the Midwest, and we have our main team and administration in our Los Angeles Vernon facility. What's the key to marketing? We've, we, we, we were like a lot of people. We'd have a little session on a Friday night, a couple of drinks, a few brainstorming sessions, and we'd come up with ideas and suggestions, and then we'd go out and see what we could do in the market. Well, we quickly learned that really wasn't the key. It was a lot of fun, and, and we, had, we, we made a lot of product that some of it got out and some of it didn't, but the real key was to talk and discuss with our customers. It's so much easier to give the customer what they want, when they want, than try and think ahead of the ball curve and try and outthink the customer. The customer will tell us. And with our relationship over many, many years, we've got strong relationships with our customers and they're happy to tell us what they're, what they're needing, what they're thinking and what's coming down the pipe. And, that, and that's part of our challenge, to listen to the customer and deliver. Grow our market share. How do we grow the market? What creative things do we need to be doing to grow the market? You know, do we do, do we do uh, biannual sales seminars? We go visit. We ride with the customers. We we teach their sales staff, make them understand how all the good qualities that the products we have to offer, and especially the venison and the savina, how how, uh, how it's the grass fed and the hormones and the no antibiotics. It's just a big buzz right now. So it's, it's a real positive. So growing that market is, is part of our challenge. Ensure equity across all handlers, top to bottom. So what does that mean? It means that everyone from, from, the, from the farmer to the processor to the importer to distribution, everyone who's part of the chain is sharing in the success of it. So no one really misses out. And that's the only way we can keep the momentum and the enthusiasm of everyone involved in the sale. Long-term vision. We're always reinvesting back into the business. We're always looking for what's coming next. Where do we need to be? And that's, that's part of our role, uh, part of my role too, is the, as the getting the business of where it is today. Is we're spending more time outside the business looking in rather than inside the business looking out. And it's, it's, it's really important to, to see what's coming down the pipe next. Risk. Financial investment, physical distribution, owning and holding stocks. What's going on in the market? Are we, are we long? Are we short? Um, is there a trend coming? We're not, we're not onto it. How do, we, how do we get ahead of the game? Investment versus return. How much do we invest in, in manufacturing to, and what's the return going to be? Uh, what are the products we need to be putting through the cut shop? What are the products we need to be grinding? How do we need to package, package it? 
information we need to provide to the consumer. Economic headwind, headwinds. You know, we get, as Glenn mentioned, there's changes in exchange rate, there's changes in trends. You know, what, what's the housewife looking for? What, what are the millennials thinking about? What, what information do they need? The, um, and the baby boomers, what do, we need, what do we need to have ready for the baby boomers? boomers? The kids are gone, no more kids are going through college, the house is paid off, now they're going to start looking after themselves. They're going to start eating better. They, they want to know what they're doing, what, what, they're, what they're putting inside their bodies for longevity and everything else that goes with it. Supply shortfalls, how are we, how are we going to cope in the next two or three years with the short supply of venison, one of our key items? What do we need to do? How, how are we going to bridge this short supply? We, we can't go to the customer and say, sorry, all the farmers are reta retaining all their hinds, they're building up the herd, there's no venison for two years. Just you know, stay cool, stay tuned, we'll be back to you, and then we'll, when we're ready, we'll talk to you again. It doesn't work like that. All the work's been done, all the market's been developed. They're excited. Obviously, everyone's part of the chain. So what are we going to do about the shortfall? How are we going to get through this? What, what changes do we need to make? How creative do we have to be? Regulations. Um, we, we're up against, in the US, we're up against lots of regulations from labelling, uh, from, from government intervention, uh, all, all the way down to the restaurant, uh, nutritional information, what everyone wants to know about the product. So we, we have a lot of regulations, interruptions in what we're trying to achieve. Profitability. You know, is this a good product? Can we make a little bit of money? Do we, what do we do? Do we reinvest? Profits before taxes, which is you know, a big, and every industry, every part of the chain has to be part of the, uh, we call this the money shot. Every industry has to have this. So what have we got here? We've got cost of goods. What the venison costs, what it costs to move through the system. Expenses to run the organisation, facilities, salespeople, distribution, trucks, insurance, packaging. Goes on and on, cost of goods. What's left? 1%. One PD out of every dollar is what we consider would be profit. That's before tax. Operational flow. Port to facility. We're, again, we're, we're strategically located. We're close to the port. We're close to the airport. That, that was our call. So, we, so we're, we're located close to the distribution centre. Lots of trucking. Lots of freight, lots of air freight, lots of FedExing. It's all about being located. We, 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 we're, we're right in amongst it. If you want to come to visit with us, be ready for some traffic because there's lots going on downtown in, in the neck of woods we're in. The port. A couple of years ago, we had a, uh, um, a slowdown of the workforce at the port. Um, some would argue, how could they go any slower? But they did. And... Uh, and it is no different than the ferry, ferry uh, workers going on strike around Christmas when everyone's trying to get across Cook Strait. So they, they, they had us by the, sh you know, they had us really tight. And we had numerous containers of sitting out in Long Beach we couldn't get get out, you know, with with perishable uh, chilled products with their time ticking on them. So so we have we have delays at the port, um, and that and that really hurt us. That was a couple of years ago. They've sorted it out. There was a West Coast thing and. And uh, it, it was really hard on us. We, we, you know, we had options of going through Philadelphia and bringing it back, and, and we were about ready to do that when they finally resolved it, but it was a long, painful, painful process. So our operational flow, port to facility, our regulatory clearances, we, we have to submit all the paperwork, fish and wildlife, ag, we have to check all the documentation, we have to make sure the labelling is correct, we have to provide all that information. And it has to be done right at the New Zealand end for us to get it through into, into the US. We have to physically rec we receive every container. We break the seal, we, we open the container, we check it, so it backs into our dock and we, and we, bring, we unload it and bring it into our facility. Every, every container we bring in. It gets another set of eyes, which is super important. Operational flow. Further processing packaging. Again, taking the product to market. Distribution, transportation, very key. Again, big country, how do we get it to every, every part of the country? Liability insurances. Um, it's no secret, the US is a litigious society. Uh, they, they do sue, and we've been sued, and uh, you've got to gear up and be ready for it. 
Um, and sometimes it, it, you know, it's a painful process, it's not always fair, but you know, certain claims we just pay because uh, it, 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 it costs you way much more money to fight. Um, it doesn't happen every day, but when it does, I, mean, uh, I need, certainly need to take my uh, blood pressure pills because it's very, very disturbing. We have, to, we have to work with big companies. We, we have to do marketing marketing agreements. We have to do rebate programs. Um, this is all part of the getting in and in, in playing, playing games with the big boys. It's, it's all a part, part of getting your product through the market system. Administration support. Yeah, we have a fairly big accounting team. Obviously, yeah, we, we're dealing with big companies and, and uh, you just got to get it right. Otherwise, if, if it does not right, they, they find any excuse not to pay you. So all this is a bouncing ball. This all is layered into the cost of goods, as I shared with you before. Marketing, it doesn't just jump off the shelf. Food shows, sales seminar, education. We're always out there educating, educating the sales force on how to sell, how to promote this product, where it fits on a menu, where it fits cost-wise on a menu. You know, who, what sort of menu should this product be on? Yours truly. Cutting and further edu cut cuttings. What's a cutting? Cutting is where we go into a restaurant and we take product in and we get the chef and we cut the product and we and we show him how it compares with what, something he may already have already on his menu. Given given a, give a further education with the customers on where it fits in, how it could be priced, and and the real benefits of having this product, our product, your product on the menu. We do written material, we do uh, electronic newsletters, marketing materials. We design product lists and newsletters for a lot of our customers with their name and all their information on it. Great rack chop. Uh, marketing seminars, uh, we put them on all We, we would, wouldn't be a week goes by where we're not talking to a group all over the or different parts of the country. We do special promotions. Product highlights. Um, sometimes we get long on something, we've got to move it. Sometimes we've got, we, we've got a short, a short of a product, we've got to be a bit more creative in how we cut it, how we present it. One of our, one of our aims is getting product on menus is to slightly cut down the portion sizes. Now it sort of goes against what we're all trying to do, sell product, but at the end of the day, the product stays on the menu, the cost of the actual product stays realistic, and, and we, get that, we get that follow through. Dedication and knowledgeable sales staff. We spend a lot of time training our trainers. So what's training the trainer? If our guys go out and knowledgeably sell product into a chain or, or a restaurant or an independent, the salesperson from the distribution will be, always be with them. So they're learning every day on, on how to sell and promote and understand the product. Again, big part of what we do. Our end intent, grow the business. And the intent is to is increase the availability and the, and the and the promote the product into the U.S. Um, we've seen the numbers that go into Europe. We see the numbers that go into the U.S. U.S. has been a stable market for many years, and we believe that that uh, and that, and I say this with tongue in cheek. We'd rather take a bit more product away from Europe and move it to the U.S., where it has a stable return and, and we can grow help grow the market. Also builds product loyalty. Um, chefs um, and, and big caterers and, and big multi users, they, they like consistency. They don't like change. They like the same product day in, day out. Once they get comfortable with the product, that's what they want. They don't, they don't, they don't, they can't handle a lot of changes. You know, even if it's a new lid or something else, they think it's different. And even though the product may have stayed the same, they, they like this consistency and that builds loyalty and that's important to even, all of us. Challenges, we've got lots of them. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Increases in global costs and proteins and local economics. What, is, what does all that mean? Well, we, we fight every day with buy local. And you, we all know that our food miles are good but because we're so efficient on how we, how we ship and travel. But this buy local is big, big in the US, and, and it's, it's, it's a growing trend, and we, we've got to, we're going to counteract against that. Um, Global cost of protein, it's, it's something that's happened all over the, all over the world and, and we've, um, you know, we're competing with, with other, other importers from different countries on different products. A tug of war, it's a tug of war between the cost of 
product, product versus the, what the consumer and the market will bear. Then there's our cliff shot. Increasing regulatory requirements we've touched on and, so, and associated uh, operational expenses. Just, it, it's ever, it just continues. Every time you turn around, they want something else from you. Breaking down the market barriers through setting the point of, of production differences versus the competition. So what, what are we going to do? We've got, we've got to show them why the product is better, how, you can, how the restaurants, how the chains can do, be successful with it. Obviously, they've got to make a profit. How can they do it with our product? And, that, and that's part of our challenge. Thanks for the opportunity.